am Lillian McMorris, and welcome to The Lillian McMorris Show. It is our effort to not only entertain you, but inform you as to what's going on within our community. Southern Nevada has a wide, diverse community, and of course, with that comes challenges. There are many, many challenges, and right now we want to concentrate on challenges of our young people. Not only bullying, but drugs and alcohol and influences, all of the things that unfortunately affect the youth within our community. There is a young man who has been doing a tremendous job over the years. I totally love, admire, and respect what he has done. He's a tremendous writer, he's a great entertainer, but overall, he's a mentor. Please welcome Mr. R. Byron Stringer. Welcome, Thank you. Byron. Wow, with that introduction, it makes me feel so important. <laughs> well, you are important, <laughs> and what you do, your work is important. Thank you. Your work is important. And we've got a, a wonderful young lady who's actually going to do a monologue a little later on for us, and I'd like to talk to Akaya, right? Ayaka. Ayaka, Ayaka, and Ayaka is 10 years old. Welcome, Ayaka. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's talk to Byron a little bit about the monologues and how he wrote them and all of that, and then I'm going to find out a little bit more about you. Is that all right with you? Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. How did you get into uh, writing the monologues? See, when we first met, mm -hmm. boy, boy, I keep dating myself on all of these. Don't these tell things. everybody. How many years ago was that in the uh, Dare program? Just a couple program? years ago. <laughs> a couple years ago in the <laughs> Dare program, <laughs> trying to reach the young people in our mm -hmm. community, which the Clark County School District no longer has. The D.A.R.E. program. That's unfortunate. And it is unfortunate. We have to understand finances. But with that came how you could give your message continuously to the young people in our community. I taught the D.A.R.E. program probably for about 12 years. Mm -hmm. See, my, I'll let you say it, not me. See? <laughs> out of my 26-year career with Metro, I've been retired now for almost three years see? now. Now, who's adding? I, I don't know. Yeah. Don't <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with the D.A.R.E. program, the D.A.R.E. program was only able to go so far. Right. Our kids are dying every day. If you watch CNN, you just turn on the news. You're, just three weeks ago, we Facing had a 10-year-old boy who's just as old as Ayaka. Right. He killed himself. Right. About a month and a half ago, a 14-year-old girl lady, right here. Right, in yes, Las Vegas. she killed herself. Mm -hmm. Our kids are killing themselves. They're dying of drug overdoses. But even worse than that, mm -hmm. uh, with the Toteg monologues, I explain that a Toteg is so much more than what you get when you die. A Toteg is How something... How did you come up with that name? Because that's so powerful. And, and, and a lot of our young people have no idea. You say Toteg, but then you explain it. So how... I mean, how did that even come about that you would utilize that phraseology, toe-tag monologue? Police officers are what you call first responders. That means we're generally the first ones to show up on the crime scene. We have to put on all that yellow tape. And one of the last people to show up is the coroner when somebody's lost their life. And I've watched a lot of people get toe-tags. But a toe-tag is more than what you get when you die. A toe-tag can be something that you have while you're still alive. And that's the problem with our kids. Our kids have toe tags on right. of alcoholism. They're cutting themselves, mm -hmm. suicide, low self-esteem, bullying. And you cover all that within the workshops, the toe tag monologue. Within the workshops, workshops and within the performances. We mm -hmm. use young people just like Ayaka. Mm -hmm. um, and they get up on the stage and they perform these stories, these monologues. Mm -hmm. And the kids are captivated. You see, it makes a big difference when kids are watching kids talk to them right. versus me doing another PowerPoint presentation, giving them another chapter to read in the book. You know, when they see a kid telling their story, telling their it's story. just it really just pops out. What's them. the most powerful of all the ones, and you've been to most of the high schools and most mm -hmm. of the community centers, in your opinion, what is the most powerful one that you've written? Wow. Wow. See, you had to think about that one. There are, there, there are so many because I'm connected to all mm -hmm. of them in different ways because I've written from things that I've seen on the streets. So when I see these monologues performed, I remember those stories. I remember those calls for service right. that I've gone to. And the one that Ayaka is going to be performing is just, wow, I, you know, she's dealing with one that's, that's dealing with drive-by shootings. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of kids die I in drive-by shootings. Mm -hmm. And it's real. It's one thing to click on your TV and to watch it. It's a whole nother thing to be there, to put out the yellow tape mm -hmm. and hearing people screaming, that's my baby. 26 years of that. Over 26 years. Wow. 
It's all right. That's a feeling. That's a feeling. How'd you get involved, Ayaka? Well, um... With the workshops, with working with Byron. Oh, well, first I was just in... And a regular acting class with Miss mm -hmm. um, Kim Flowers, mm -hmm. and um, I never really experienced how to do like something as intense as that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Miss Kim um, introduced me to um, Showtime Monologues, and I didn't know who who it was written by first. Um, and then uh, I was a little bit nervous about doing it I, because um, I was worried because you know. I, I knew that there was a part that you had to like be intense and like cry something like being a be get emotional. into character. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, it was hard for me to do that. But then, but then, um, then I realized that I shouldn't be scared of doing it because, um, like once once I just start doing it, it just comes it comes me. natural. How old are you? I'm ten. I'm ten. What school do you go to? Marino. Marino. You good student? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this something you want to do as you get older? Be an actress? Okay. What message would you like to give to the kids, to young people out there? Like when you're at school walking down the hallways and you see different things that are happening, bullying or someone being mean to someone, what do you tell them? Well, um, well, I, I have a lot of things to tell them. Um, I have more things to tell the people that, um, the people that actually bully others. Mm -hmm. Because, it, um, Maybe just because they got bullied mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they should make other people feel the same. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we're going to come back. Actually, what we're going to do, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the obstacles that you face getting your message out there. Okay. Um, you do have a GoFundMe. Yes, we so do. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then I want you to use this time, I'm going to take a little break, to get into character. Because I would like for you to do your monologue. Will you do that for me? Okay, I would like that. We're talking about toe tag monologues, and of course, the writer, inventor, visionary, Mr. R. Byron Stringer, is here, and I appreciate him taking time to be here. He's had, he does have a GoFundMe, and we're going to talk a little bit about that because part of the obstacles in getting the message out is being able to have the money to do so. Absolutely. And not only reaching our people right here in Southern Nevada, we want to take our kids cross country, and you can help us do that. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. The Lillian McMorris Show is produced by Tigo & Associates Productions. Multi-camera shoots either in our studio or on location. That's Tigo & Associates Productions. Give us a call at 702-509-7728. And welcome back. We're, we're talking about a very, very serious subject that not only is in southern Nevada, but all over the country, actually, when it comes to our young people and what is going on, what are some of the challenges that our young people are facing? And the unfortunate thing is we as adults don't know how to deal with it. But there is one person who has taken the time over the years to write monologues, and they are called Toe Tag Monologues. R. Byron Stringer is with us. I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate over the years everything that you have shared with us and realizing you fed a lot of it from your police background. Yes, I have. And, you know, you see a lot as a police officer. And it was kind of therapeutic for me because I was able to get it out and mm -hmm. write it on paper. Mm -hmm. And it's just a wonderful thing when you're able to take a lot of that pain that you've seen and it brings healing to the community you and know, the country. And, and, and being on your advisory board for so long, one of the obstacles that we had was being able to have the money to mm -hmm. travel, have the money even to go places within Nevada to get the word out. But now you want to go across country. Yes. We have a GoFundMe because we're going to Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Ferguson needs us. First, initially, I reached out to them um, because of so much stuff happening. They're like, you know, hold on for a second. They contacted us, mm -hmm. and they said, we really want you to come. We just don't have the money. Okay. I said, we're going to start a GoFundMe account. That's right. And that's exactly what we have going on right now. People can give mm -hmm. by going to GoFundMe.com mm -hmm. backslash 
of toe tags. And or they can go actually to the website that we're to going to put yes. up, which is uh, toe tags dot org dot org, and hit the donate and hit button. the donate button Absolutely. and actually donate directly to you. Yes, they and can. I'm going to give a phone number at the end of this, but right now we've got. Uh, one I of agree. our wonderful, wonderful young ladies who is a part of the cast, and I don't know how many cast members you're going to take when you travel, but I know this young lady will be one of them. And and just to give our audience the feel and find out exactly what Toe Tag Monologues is and what the message is from one young person to another. This monologue is dealing with gang violence. And it tells of a story of a young kid who he didn't know his father. He jumps into a stolen car with his friends. They're smoking and drinking. And he's about to get initiated into a gang. They hand him a gun. He closes his eyes, points it out the window, and pulls the trigger. What you're about to see is somebody who was hit by one of those bullets. My brother came back home. My mother says I'm supposed to tell everyone he went to see his father for a few months. But that's not the truth. He don't even know his father. He was at a youth boot camp for bad kids. Anthony isn't really bad. My mother says he's just hard-headed. She's right. He is. Sometimes he stays out late, and sometimes... He smells like those funny smelling cigarettes. I love Anthony, but I'm afraid if he keeps on hanging out with that gang, something is going to happen. They make him do bad things, really bad things. A few days ago, I went across the tracks to my friend's house. I know it was far, but... I wanted to see her new baby kittens. We, we were walking through the playground when, when it happened. I knew those guys in the car. The one holding the gun was Anthony. Why was he pointing the gun at me? I started to scream his name, but I didn't think he could hear me. Because we're running and screaming that he had a gun. I ran towards him, but his eyes were closed. <laughs> Some people go through their whole lives with their eyes. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't really think he meant to shoot me. You know, my brother loves me. I still love him. You know, at, at this point, after listening to that and watching that, it, it makes you really, really, as one would say, full or very emotional. Yes. But that's the whole point of what you've got and what you've done. Give me what we were to get from what she just did. The messages are all intertwined in the monologues. Mm -hmm. For example, when she said some people go through their whole lives right. with their eyes closed. Mm -hmm. I do teachable moments in between all of the different monologues. Right. And that's one thing that I point out. And I ask the kids, are your eyes closed? Mm -hmm. Because if they are, you're probably you going this. to cut, you're right. probably going to crash. Mm -hmm. And then I ask the kids, like, do you drive a car? They say, yeah, of course we drive a car. If you close your eyes while you're driving a car, what's going to happen? Everybody says you're going to crash. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening with our children. They're crashing every single day mm -hmm. and they're crying out for help. Those bullets that came out of that gun kill innocent people. Right. This time he killed his little sister. But next time it might, might be your mother, it might be your cousin. Mm -hmm. 
And some of the things that you do, you actually bring out the body bag. Yes. I mean, this is real. Roll out a gurney with the body bag, and she'll get on the body bag, and Mm -hmm. we close it up and roll it off Mm -hmm. with the lights and the music. And we have to make it real because our kids, they don't want to see a bunch of Barney and Mickey Mouse. I mean, there's a place for all of that. But this is this is the time to get our kids to wake up. In order to do that, not only here in Southern Nevada, again, let's go back to the GoFundMe, because you need help from our community to not only continue to spread messages like this here, but as you say, you were invited to Ferguson. We're going to Ferguson. We just came from Savannah. Um, New York wants us. Detroit wants us. Los Angeles wants us. Everybody wants us to come out. We need money because it's really expensive to go with the cast of 16 kids Mm -hmm. and get them out there to perform. So if people go to the GoFundMe um, Mm -hmm. backslash toe tags, then they'll be able to give or to the go toe straight tags. to toe go to toe tags tags dot org. org. Right. Toe tags and dot and org. I suggest toe tags dot org because mm-hmm. then it's directly to you. Absolutely. This is Toe Tag Monologues. We've been talking to our Byron Stringer and our wonderful guest. Thank you. You were so wonderful. We appreciate you. And you keep doing what you're doing. We'll see you on the big screen one of these days. But right now, we appreciate the message that you're giving to the young people. Okay? Thank you so much. And for more about this message, please go to the website at www.toetags.org or simply give them a call at 702-834-3557. You can donate at toetags.org or you can donate at GoFundMe backslash toetag monologue. Yes, toetags. Toetags is... If you want them to come to a community center, to a church, to a school, give them a call and find out what exactly they do. I'm going to read this because I find it very useful. As Totag Monologues uses theater arts to help kids overcome the challenges facing today's generation, helping them to make better choices. Find out more about them on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. They're all over the Internet. We want you to go see what they have and support Toe Tag Monologues. Thank you so much for being here, Byron. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you so much. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back. You know your business could really benefit from a great mobile app. Being accessible on mobile devices everywhere can take you to new heights of audience interaction that will improve sales, service, and your customer's overall experience of your experience. Thankfully, we're here to help. We can help you build a beautiful mobile app and mobile website. Rely on our expertise to handle everything from start to finish affordably and professionally. Contact us for a free demo to see what an app for your business would look like. And welcome back. As we've been talking about as young people within our community, the challenges that we go through and sometimes they just don't have anything to do so therefore they hang out and come up with something negative well the city of las vegas has gotten together with my brother's keeper and there are initiatives in place whereas there are things that are planned that are positive and i'd like to invite and and kathy's been with us before kathy works so hard kathy thomas gibson welcome back thank you so much thank you for, for having joining me. us yes. thank you so much well now you're with the city of las vegas That's we talked right. before we were with north, north las, las vegas, vegas new but, city yes. but you know what you're still doing the same thing yes building I building communities supporting community engagement supporting communities with our young people and the challenges that they face and that's kind of what i want to talk about because you've got safe summer nights that are coming up absolutely now a couple have already passed and yes. i'm sure that they were quite successful yes. you were at uh, vegas verdes elementary school right and what you don't know is that's my alma mater i oh, know i didn't know that yeah, okay. fourth fifth and sixth grade <laughs> i went to vegas verdes okay that's right that's right and then you were at hewittson elementary correct and now we're let's see talking about may the 22nd jt mcwilliams now correct. we are talking about a different population now with the next three schools absolutely so absolutely. what i need to talk to you about is the challenges that we go through within those neighborhoods, um, economically speaking, the family function, yes. um, utilizing My Brother's Keeper in the Neighborhood Initiative, yes. and how we're going to do that to bring these kids and their families together to something positive. Absolutely. Thank you for the chance to share this. Mm-hmm. So the My Brother's Keeper Initiative actually started with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Correct. 
focused on the academic achievement of students of color, particularly right. young well, men. Well, actually, we can go back further because yes. you were in North. You don't want to talk about it, but I can give that history. Yes. You were in North Las Vegas Absolutely. government at that time. Absolutely. And before the U.S. Conference of Mayors picked it up, North Las Vegas was already doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. See, you don't want to say that, but well, that's we, all right. Well, we, in, in that particular jurisdiction, Almost every one of those schools mm -hmm. qualified as a troubled school. Correct. Meaning they had low academic performance. They had issues of high poverty, and mm -hmm. we were often using free and reduced lunch as a proxy to tell right. us which families were in economic straits. Mm -hmm. And it was always 80%, 95 and in some cases wow. 98% of the students qualified. Mm -hmm. And so when we know we have issues of poverty happening, mm -hmm. It spills over into other areas. That's Kids true. don't learn well if they're hungry, right? Mm -hmm. Kids aren't going home doing homework if the lights get cut off. That's right. That's right. Children are more likely to get into negative behavior if the parents are working. They mm -hmm. were working two and three jobs to mm -hmm. make ends meet. Kids didn't or have. they're hanging out too. They might You've be hanging out too. Your adults hanging out and your kids hanging out, and then yeah. both neither of which is a good thing. One of the things we discovered that for a lot of our kids that were struggling, you know, the daughter was fifteen, mom was thirty, grandma was forty-five, grandma forty-five. That's so they, and they were all kind of hanging out. Both in the club, you <laughs> know. Exactly. So yeah. So. so the kids were raising themselves. Mm -hmm. So rather than stay focused on those kinds of negative act approaches mm -hmm. to dealing with some of the issues. We started working with community partners on a program called Safe Summer Nights. Right. And it had police involvement, it had nonprofits involved, and obviously using the schools mm -hmm. as a hub, because we mm -hmm. know where the young people are. Mm -hmm. And Safe Summer Nights was designed to talk to or present different alternatives for young people to be involved in when school is out, after school and during the summer mm -hmm. months. And so we'd have exhibitors come in and talk about recreation and athletics. Right. We have you food, have food. You've had entertainment, and we had entertainment, you, games, right. prizes. Right. And we and, also, you know, and the giveaways seems to get people there because they want to see what are you giving us. Now absolutely. we hate to say it, you know, what are you giving us for free? Right. But actually, the things that you were giving, it, you even had like dental sets. Yep. Make sure they had a new toothbrush and toothpaste. I mean, things that we take for granted. Right. Were right. actually needs for the economic status of where what you did before absolutely and we were fortunate enough to have actual dental checkups happening yes on site mm -hmm. for the adults we would have blood pressure checks uh, we even on um, some of the events were able to get the mamma van out yes to do mammograms for women so we tried to expand this from just fun and recreation mm -hmm. so that it was really about community resources mm -hmm. families need to get plugged into things they may not even be aware of there are a lot of resources out there, but when things are fragmented, especially for families that uh, don't have resources, right. don't have reliable transportation. Because we no longer remember we used to have the community resource centers. Right. And then the funding was cut, cut on those. So therefore, there is nothing other than what you're putting together. So let's talk about each one that's coming up. J.T. Yes. McWilliams, May the 22nd. Correct. Uh, from 5 until 7. Correct. And what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to make sure this is on the screen so people can see, okay? Awesome. Booker Elementary School, May 29th. Yes. And that's from 5.30 to 7.30. Yes. And Matt Kelly Elementary, June 3rd from 5.30 to 7.30. And as I said, these are all basically in the same area. In Correct. The same, you're, you're talking about basically the same economic status that's right. neighborhood. That's right. Um, being able to talk to parents, being able to have services available at little or no cost. And that's the deal. The exhibitors that participate mm -hmm. must agree to provide those services at no cost to the families. Okay. And so even uh, when we had health care services that would normally right. be sliding scale, mm -hmm. well, we already know, based on the economic status of the families, mm -hmm. that sliding scale for them means zero. Zero. We have families at one of the elementary schools that is located directly across the street from public housing. Mm -hmm. And we know that most of those families actually have zero earned income. Right. Right. And so they are receiving benefits that may amount to less than $1,000 per month, but there's no earned income, earned income in those households. So what we've so said... These things help out. 
Absolutely. And so we have to make sure we let the parents know the services are available. Come with your child. Yes. Don't just send them with a bag to pick up all the goodies. Right. <laughs> Come with the child so you're educated as well. Yes. And those community resources, we want everybody to come out to Safe Summer Nights. And it's sponsored by the City of Las Vegas. Yes. And again, it's going to be at J.T. McWilliams. Yes. Booker. And you'll see it on the screen. And Matt Kelly, I'll give you the dates and the times. We want the parents to come out with the students. Absolutely. And make sure that you find out what services are available, because sometimes parents don't know. That's right. Because, as we said, the community resource centers, there's only a few of them left. Yes, unfortunately. So, again, it's free to the public, mm -hmm. free and open, free food, free music free games, giveaways, mm -hmm. but more importantly, it's an opportunity to connect with some, resources, with some resources, close those gaps. Absolutely. That's Safe Summer Nights. The information is on the screen, and we certainly want to thank Kathy Thomas Gibson for being with us. Is there a website that the parents can go to if they have access to a computer? Absolutely. So they can go directly to the City of Las Vegas' website, mm -hmm. www. LasVegasNevada.gov. Okay. All spelled out one All word. All spelled out. LasVegasNevada.gov. And go to Community Resources. Community Resources. LasVegasNevada.gov and click on Community Resources and you'll find all of the information about the Safe Summer Nights 2015. Kathy, thank you thank so you much for, for joining me. us. We appreciate it. You have been watching to the Lillian McMorris Show and we're so happy to bring information to you. We're happy we could, we could bring earlier the monologue and try to face some of the challenges and just let you know what's going on within our community with our young people. We're happy that Kathy is here with the City of Las Vegas and if, of course come combining efforts with neighborhood initiatives and with the just safe summer nights so you can find out what's going on within our community. Please continue to watch the Lillian McMorris Show right here on Cox 96. We say thank you to Cox Communications, Tigo and Associates. We also would like to thank Paragon Gaming and Sands Corporation. I'm Lillian McMorris and we'll talk to you next time.